New York Mayor Eric Adams has announced an effort to involuntarily commit people who have severe and untreated mental illnesses. And he is facing a lot of backlash as a result. And to be quite clear, the backlash in a lot of ways is accurate because of the vagueness of what he's proposing here. The lack of resources that I'm noticing when it comes to treating mental health patients. And also just the factors necessary to determine whether or not someone should be involuntarily committed. These are questions that need very specific answers to. And unless he can provide those answers, this could be a disaster. But with that said, for everyone who thinks that involuntary commitment or involuntarily committing someone is always wrong and you should never do it, I do disagree with them. And so let me make my case beginning with the details of what Eric Adams wants to do. So the effort will involve hospitalizing people involuntarily, even if they do not pose an imminent risk to harm or harm to others. And his argument here is, why do we have to wait for them to hurt others to give them the care that they so desperately need? And I hear you on that, but you also have to balance the fact that people have civil liberties and it is very serious for the state to control a person's body, it is very serious for someone to lose their bodily autonomy. And that is essentially what happens when someone is involuntarily committed. Let's be real about that. So the factors in determining who should be involuntarily committed need to be very specific. They need to be clear and I'm not really seeing that here and I'm concerned about that. Now, according to Adams, the common misunderstanding persists that we cannot provide involuntary assistance unless the person is violent. This myth must be put to rest. Going forward, we will make every effort to assist those who are suffering from mental illness and whose illness is endangering them by preventing them from meeting their basic human needs. So I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. We've gotten to this point where a lot of these big cities do have people living on the streets suffering from severe mental health issues, partly because we don't have a healthcare system that works. It's a privatized model that price gouges the hell out of people. And if individuals were able to get basic yearly checkups, if people felt comfortable going to the doctor, if they noticed that there's something wrong, there's something going on, maybe they're not feeling so great. That would, in my opinion, solve a lot of this. And we could have prevented getting to the point where we're at now, okay? But with that said, again, I just, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with, well, I mean, even if the person isn't really posing a threat to anyone else or themselves, if we see that they're suffering from severe mental illnesses, we are going to decide that we're going to involuntarily commit them. I don't. I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm just being honest with you guys. There are instances in which where it does make sense and I'll get to that in a moment. But let me give you more details about what Eric Adams has said and what he plans on doing. There are other issues as well. So the city said it would roll out training immediately to police officers. Let's pause right there. Let me read that again actually. The city said it would roll out training immediately to police officers. Okay, the NYPD has not been reformed in any way. A lot of the issues that we've had with the NYPD persist. So, okay, you're talking about training. What does that training entail? Because the idea of having the NYPD respond to people who are suffering from severe mental health issues is already a major red flag for me, but I'll continue. So uh, immediately to police officers, emergency medical services staff and other medical personnel to ensure compassionate care. But the city's new directive on the policy acknowledges that case law does not provide extensive guidance regarding removals for mental health evaluations based on short interactions in the field. So you guys, you guys are seeing the red flags, right? I mean, I don't think I need to spell it out for you. When it comes to something as serious as someone's bodily autonomy, we need to be very clear about what the factors are, how do we determine that someone is a risk to themselves and to others? The idea of just having police determine like, oh, that person looks like they might have a mental health issue. 
uh, let's uh, involuntarily commit them. That doesn't sound like a good idea to me. We need specifics, we need clarity, we're not getting that here. Now, Adams partly addressed these concerns uh, during a lengthy press conference yesterday, watch the whole thing. Here is a snippet where he addresses um, issues with civil liberties. I know some people may look at what we're doing saying that we are trying to uh, do something to take away the right of people. No, we're not. The right is that people should be able to live in dignity. There's nothing dignified about living a month without having a shower. There's nothing dignified by using the corner of a tent as a restroom or having month old food sitting there or talking to yourself, being disillusioned or waiting until you carry out a dangerous act before we respond. That is just so irresponsible that we know that this person is about to probably go off the edge and harm someone, but we're gonna wait until it happens. So I partly agree with what he's saying there. Everyone deserves to have dignity, to have a safe place to live, healthy, clean food to eat, like everyone deserves that. So I do not agree with the libertarian approach that's masquerading as progressivism in some of these big cities where it's like a, you know, I mean they want to they want to like live on the streets and they want to, you know, this is what they want, then you should you just let them do what they want to. No, I I don't agree with that. But at the same time, if we're talking about <laughs> involuntarily committing people, I mean there could be a lot of cruelty in that as well. Which is why again, there is a place to involuntarily commit some folks, but you have to be clear on who that would entail. What what would the factors be again? Now, um, there's more to this. He also makes clear that he intends to get law enforcement involved. And that does open the door to some serious civil liberties violations, considering that cops have not been reformed. So uh, I just wanna play this video because he, he's very specific here. He is very clear that he intends on using the NYPD to carry this out. Let's watch. You can't solve the problem from an ivory tower. And so what we're saying to our responders that we want you to, to be engaged, Make the right determination if a person is not taking care of their basic needs. And if you can't answer the question, call the clinical experts and use your uh, FaceTime, use whatever devices you have to, to go on a video and show this is what I have in front of me. Does this meet the criteria? That police officer on patrol in the subway system on the street, they're going to be handing it off to the professionals Officers who are trained to use the sensitivity, the care, you know, because taking the officer off patrol to spend an hour and a half, an hour to engage this person with the necessary care and patience that's needed, that is not a good use of manpower. So that officer comes into a condition that needs to be corrected. They're going to hand it off to the team of officers, police officers who have a deeper training than the surface training that an everyday police officer would work. So it's about the coordination. Look, I I have to just address like the incredibly big distraction behind Eric Adams. Like the, the beautiful woman behind him who looks very uncomfortable, but also kind of looks like she's posing for the camera. <laughs> like it's amazing. Anyway, this is a serious story. Let's move on. I didn't mean to bring that up, except I did because it's again very distracting. But um, yeah, look again. Okay, what is the training though? Who does the training? What informed the training? What kind of resources are being allocated to ensure that there's not only training but clear oversight of the police as they engage in this activity? There's a lot of questions here, but let me continue. Right now, if someone is suffering from an episode and they have a severe mental illness, they'll be taken to a hospital, they'll be like a 5150 hold, but that's only for 72 hours. After that, they're just released back out onto the streets where they're very likely to suffer from another mental health issue, another episode. So the system that we have right now certainly does have some issues, I'm, I'm not denying that. Now, um, Adam said that the city would direct hospitals to keep those patients until they are stable and to discharge them only when there is a workable plan in place to connect them uh, to ongoing care. 
That sounds good, and uh, there is a little more clarity on that in the next clip. So let's watch that, and then I'll discuss some of the other issues I have. I think one of the tricky things about this is that you're really going to have to look at the cases case by case, because we're really looking at people who not only can't make their basic meet their basic needs, but are also that's causing them to be in danger. So right now we have hundreds of outreach workers at the Department of Health, folks in H and H, also in the police department and EMS who get to a situation and feel like they need a little bit more clarity. So today we want to give them some more clarity so that they can make that good assessment to be able to transport that person to the hospital. But to remember, that's only the first step. The next step is that you need to go to the hospital. It's going to be a doctor who's going to make that evaluation and to see whether or not the person needs to be kept or not. Okay, uh, she certainly does a much better job explaining how this will work than Eric Adams does. And I would like to hear more from actual mental health professionals on this matter and how this is really going to be carried out. But the final part of this that I have an issue with is the lack of resources. So for instance, Eric Adams was asked, okay, well, do you have enough hospital beds for this? And he's like, "Oh, don't worry, uh, Kathy Hochul, governor of New York, she's committed to providing 50 additional beds. What? That's, that's your answer to a, que- a very important question, by the way. Good job to the reporter who asked that question during that press conference, by the way. Great question about the resources and the need for beds. That's your answer though, 50 beds that Kathy Hochul said like, sure, yeah, yeah, no, I commit to that. We'll get around to that eventually, sure. You're not gonna be able to carry this out effectively and in a way that is really considerate of people's civil liberties, that's compassionate, that actually offers the care that people need if you're not ensuring that you cross your T's, dot your I's, and have the resources and training in place to ensure it's carried out appropriately. And so far from what I've seen, there are too many red flags. And I, I again, I think that there is a place for policies like this, but you have to be super careful because civil liberties are important. Bodily autonomy is important. And involuntarily committing someone is not a small deal. It is a big deal. And we have to protect people and their rights. Now, at the same time, I completely disagree with those who say there is no place ever for involuntary commitment. And while I don't live in New York and I don't have specific instances to bring up right now, I do have some specific stories that have occurred in Los Angeles over the last few months that I want you to consider if you are just a zero tolerance type of person when it comes to involuntarily committing people. Just a few days ago, there was a woman on the five freeway in Los Angeles. So let's go to this headline, it's from CBS LA. Naked woman on five freeway near Gorman area detained following crash. She was car- she was completely naked, she was carrying a teddy bear. She's literally walking on the freeway and that leads to a crash. Originally, I thought no one was hurt, but it turns out that one person died as a result of that crash. So this woman could have been hurt. One person did in fact die as a result of the car crash. And so what is the compassionate response to that? Really, I want you guys to consider it. Is the compassionate response to just leave her alone? Where she most certainly eventually will die or get hurt from her clear mental illness. I don't think that's compassionate at all. And so I would prefer for her to get the mental health treatment that she so clearly needs. But again, it, the, the devil is in the details. And if Gavin Newsom was proposing what Eric Adams is proposing in New York, again, I would have issues with it because there's a lack of clarity, a lack of resources, and it's just, it feels like He just wanted to roll it out without thinking it through and being careful about how this would be implemented. I'll give you another story. Uh, There was another recent incident in Los Angeles and it was pretty close to where I live. So I, I gotta be honest, I've been thinking about it a lot, even though it happened a few months ago. The Los Angeles Police Department said in a release that on October 10th at 1130 AM, A 22 year old woman was walking down Lancashire Boulevard in North Hollywood when an unhoused man who authorities identified as Jonathan Cole walked in her direction. As the two passed each other, Cole without provocation 
stabbed the victim in the head with a pair of scissors. They were actually gardening shears. The victim with the scissors embedded in her head fled to a local restaurant where she asked for help and then collapsed on the floor, according to the LAPD. She had to have surgery. There were skull fragments incredibly close to like close to her brain that they tried to they were trying to remove, but they realized it was actually more dangerous to remove that bone frag fragment. So they left it there. And look, clearly a guy attacking a 22 year old woman without any provocation has mental health issues, <laughs> clearly. So is it compassionate to him and to the community to just say like, I don't know, he's got mental health issues, but it's super cruel to involuntarily commit him? Just ask yourself that. I don't know, you might you might disagree with me, but I think it's actually um, a lack of compassion to let people like wither away and die on the streets from their mental health conditions. Because some people are gonna deny the help, some people are gonna reject it. Uh, and that's, it's not uncommon. You know, my best friend's a social worker. One of her clients uh, in his early 20s was diagnosed with schizophrenia and he was in denial about it. He didn't want to accept it and refused to get treatment. He came from a wealthy family too. And he ended up on the streets because he did not want to take medication and he didn't want to accept that he had a mental health condition. So in some cases, as, as difficult it is, as it is, I think the state does need to step in and, and provide the care even if the individual who desperately needs it is rejecting it. But we have to do it in a way that keeps people's civil rights in mind. Cuz that does matter, it's important. And then there are two other things I wanna bring up that happened in LA. Uh, there was a teenage girl who was shot and killed by police at a Burlington coat factory in North Hollywood, California. I believe it was last year if I'm not mistaken. And the police got a lot of backlash because they arrived at the scene after there was a call regarding a man who took a bike lock, one of those big heavy bike locks and was beating customers at Burlington Coat Factory with it. With it, The video was horrific, really difficult to see it. When the cops arrived, they start shooting at him and one of the bullets went through a dressing room and hit the 14 year old girl and she died. And while I think it's totally fine to criticize the way police handle that situation, no one wanted to focus on what started that story in the first place, which was a mentally ill individual who was beating the crap out of random people at a Burlington coat factory with a bike lock. So these issues matter, they're difficult, they're uncomfortable to talk about, but we gotta be real about it. And I think in these extreme cases, involuntarily committing people makes sense. But we got to ensure that we've thought through, carefully thought through all the details. And unfortunately, I'm not really seeing that with Eric Adams and what he rolled out just recently. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.